Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Daly, and I'd like to welcome you to this Mass Senior Action Candidates Forum. Tonight, we'll be hearing from the candidates for Massachusetts' 11th Essex District um, State House seat. We, the candidates, have um, chosen um, chosen lottery a lottery of what order they'll be answering questions in, and we're going to um, use that use that order, and it will rotate throughout the evening. They've also chosen an order for the final closing statements that we'll make. I want to um, thank Lynn Cam, which is here tonight and will be uh, recording, recording this forum and that will be available on channel 22. And I'd also like to thank Lynn Happens, who is also recording the forum and that will be available on the web, if I'm correct. I'd like to ask everyone right now to turn off or silence your cell phones or any other noise-making devices. Um, I'd also like to um, remind the candidates that we have a timer. We're going to s stay very close with our timer. Um, when our timer is uh, Dave, Bill French of Mass Senior Action, Mass Senior Action member, and when he holds up the stop sign, I am going to cut you off. <laughs> so stop means stop, and we're going to stick close to the time. Um, we also have three other Mass Senior Action members who will be asking some very important questions tonight. Uh, they are Kiki Chaitin, Kathy Paul, and Barbara Mann. And as you know, we'll be taking uh, questions from the audience. Um, so tonight, we will be, each candidate will make an opening statement, two minutes, and uh, Ekaterina Kudanas will be going first, uh, Charlie Gallo will be going second, and Brendan Crichton will be going third for the opening statement. Um, where's Justin? Anything that I haven't remembered to say? All right, that being said, um, you've got the microphone, so Ekaterina Kudanis, um, please, make, please make your opening statement. Good evening, my name's Katerina Kudanis, and I am running to win citizens their rights for a good environment, clean air and water, good health, safe food, and good solutions to health care, open government, good learning and recreation, and good infrastructure to create fair and equal jobs. I have an ear to the ground, I know what people want, and I am currently fighting for those issues. I love my family and my handsome husband who has made me a stronger fighter for what is right. I am trained as an architect and I received my bachelor's of architecture degree from Wentworth Institute of Technology. I know how to identify problems from different perspectives and create one great solution. I gather facts and can see the whole picture for the long term. I grew up around the block and my parents came from Greece and I learned three languages in two different cultures as a child. They worked hard to give me a good education and I want to see children have the same customized options as I did as a child. To see, where, to see them be also successful. I work in the private sector as a hardworking middle class citizen. I'm running because it's my right to run and I want to give as a, an example to others that they have the same right too. Um, whether we have little or a lot of money, whether we are, are part of the establishment or not, am I qualified? I think I'm overqualified. Do I have a heart? I have a big heart for my community. Am I smart? <laughs> yes, I think, as many people think. Say, am I a fighter? I've always been a fighter, and I know what people want. I am not afraid to fight big bullies or stand up to say what is right when others sit down. I am, some say that I am fearless. I'm, writing, I'm, fighting, I'm running to fight corruption and improve the quality of life. And I hope I can have your vote September 9. Thank you. And next, candidate Charlie Gallo. Good evening, everyone. And I want to thank first Mass Senior Action. It's a great organization. It's an organization that I'm proud to be a member of. Thanks, Elizabeth, for moderating. Dave, for being our timekeeper. And especially, I want to thank each and every person who came out tonight to take the time to learn about this, the candidates in this very important race. Uh, my name is Charlie Gallo. 
I'm a lifelong Lynn resident. My family's lived in West Lynn for 100 years. I come from a really hardworking West Lynn family. I was the first in my family to go to college. I went to college during the day, worked at night and on weekends. After that, I went to law school, and I went to law school at night while working full-time during the day. Hard work is the only thing that I know, it's something that was bred into me, and it's something that I'm here to offer you as your next state representative. After law school, I began teaching at North Shore Community College, and I also went to work in the private sector as an attorney. And there are a lot of lawyer jokes, certainly, but I want you to know that I specialize in elder law. And so every day, I represent seniors and I represent their families around issues like Medicaid, around home care, around nursing home care sometimes, unfortunately. And I'm the only candidate in this race who has the private sector experience to be your champion on Beacon Hill. I was elected to the Lynn School Committee in 2011, re-elected in 2013, and I've had a reputation there as someone who really rolls up his sleeves, gets things done, works hard, and has moved the schools forward. That's what I want to do with Lynn, that's what I want to do with Nahant, and that's why I'm running for state representative. In addition to that, I've spent a lot of time volunteering for Democratic candidates, volunteering on the Lynn Democratic City Committee, and supporting folks like Senator Warren, Congressman Tierney, and State Senator Tom McGee. We share the Democratic values that, that many of you in this room share. I share those, and I want to put them to work for you on Beacon Hill as your next state representative. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Candidate Gallo. <laughs> candidate Crichton. First, I'd like to say thank you to Mass Senior Action for, for bringing everybody together here tonight, and thank you for all the work you do, I've seen up at the State House as well as on the Council, you really keep us informed on all the issues that are so important to this community. Uh, though I'm a few years shy of uh, senior status, I am a proud member as well of Mass Senior Action, so thank you so much for letting me be on your team. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brendan Crichton. I'm a lifelong resident of Lynn. I'm joined here by a number of my family who are also lifelong residents. My grandmother Joan is here, my father Kevin, mother Diane, my new mother-in-law, Steph, and uh, most importantly, my lovely wife, Andrea. Uh, Andrea's trying to set the record for most doors knocked by a politician's spouse, and she's doing a very good job so far. So thank you for all of your, your commitment. I really appreciate everything. Um, who I am today is a result of a loving and de dedicated family, and more importantly, a, a strong community in which I grew up. From kindergarten at Lincoln Thompson Elementary to my graduation from Lynn Classical, I was able to learn from some of the best teachers around. I took full advantage of every park, every playground, every field court, from Lynn Woods to Lynn and Nahant Beach. I was fortunate to build skills from after school programs and take advantage of local op employment opportunities. But most of all, I truly benefited from all the people of Lynn. We are a strong, resilient bunch. I'm running for state representative simply to give back to the community that has given me so much. And because I believe after nine years working for State Senator Tom McGee and four and a half years on the City Council that I'm the most qualified candidate and ready to serve on day one. I look forward to the exchange of ideas here tonight and I want to thank everybody for being part of this. Thank you. Thank you. So our, our first question, the response will go in the same order, and then we will rotate after that. So um, first question. If elected, what are your top priorities for your first term in office? My first priority is fixing government to become more open and transparent and um, creating equality with, with the jobs in the public sector to break those down of the private sector, um, update the open meeting laws to actually um, create uh, that, establish that uh, a virtual office is property of town hall, so where people could find information and documents online and that meetings are fully summarized so people can understand what is going on in a public meeting. We need to show accountability and we need to show the budgets and job uh, postings online um, to create a fair government. Um, secondly, I, I believe we can improve the economy and improve the environment at the same time 
by working on our infrastructure. And I noticed that Senator McGee is actually the chair of the Transportation Commission and Global. Um, he's also on the committee for the um, Environmental and Global um, Committee. So I would like to work with him and share my ideas on how we can improve our infrastructure, our transportation, create jobs for locals, and get this, you know, this, this jam of the economy kick-started and not transform commercial properties into private housing for market rate, for, for, um, for, for that does not benefit the community. Uh, one of my major issues... Thank you, candidate Kudanis. Thank you for the question, Kiki. When I'm elected as your next state representative, my top three priorities are going to be public education, jobs, and senior citizens. And I'll take those in reverse order. Senior citizens. As I've said, I'm an elder law attorney and I work every single day with seniors with their families around Medicaid, home care, nursing home care. I can be a champion and will be a champion on those issues. I'm the only one at this table who has real world experience in those issues and private sector expertise on those issues. Tonight in the room is my grandmother, Lorraine Gallo, who lives at Kings Lynn. I've spent a lot of time as a young person at Ocean Shores Apartments, where my great-grandmother lived, and she was somebody who really instilled in me the ideas of hard work and the ideas of giving back to your community. And I think that, that seniors who have worked so hard, who have built a, a family and a home here, ought to be worked for, and I'll do that. On jobs, as a school committee member, I have a record of helping to create jobs. First of all, just through education in and of itself. An educated public is a public that's gonna be able to go contribute to society, get a good job. But in addition, I've worked with our unions in Lynn to open up Lynn Tech at night so that we have a training program where adults can go at night, learn a skill if they're out of work, and get a good job, perhaps start a business. Finally, education. I was very proud a couple of weeks ago to help put the shovels in the ground for the first school to be built in Lynn since the 1990s. We need to continue prioritizing schools, prioritizing education, and as your next state representative, I will do that. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate Gallo. Thank, thank you. Thank uh, you. My, my top three priorities, if elected as state representative, would be education, infrastructure investment, and economic development. All three of those lead to a stronger economy, more opportunities, and more jobs. With that, we have expanded revenue that we're able to provide the services that are so important to so many here in the room tonight. Uh, when we talk about home care services, which actually saves the state money while enabling folks to stay and receive care in their home. When we talk about keeping the ride rates affordable and other transportation infrastructure investments, and also bridging the gap for health care, investing Chapter 70 money in our schools, and creating new schools, as, as Candidate Gallo had mentioned. All of these things come from an expanded revenue and expanded tax base. And that's why I will work hard to promote smart growth and economic development policies if elected. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate Crichton. <laughs> On the second question, Candidate Gallo will respond first. Residents are concerned about the future of the Union Hospital. Elected leaders have stated that Partners, the owner of the Union Hospital, is moving forward with plans to reduce services, and we may need to find some other providers to fill those service cuts. At the same time, there is a grassroots effort to keep services at the Union. What is your plan to keep the same services provided by the Union Hospital in Lynn? Thank you for the question, Kiki, and it's a great one. And if I may tell you a short story, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Ocean Shore is a building that's very close to my heart. I spent a lot of time there uh, with my great-grandmother, Adrian Breton, when I was a, a young child, and she worked at the Old Lynn Hospital. And I remember when the Old Lynn Hospital, where I was born, where maybe many of you were born, closed. And it was a real tragedy in the city of Lynn and in this district. And we're facing the same thing with Union Hospital. It's unacceptable. It's absolutely unacceptable that a city like Lynn would go without a hospital. Driving to Salem from Wall Plaza or from Ocean Shores or Kings Lynn or anywhere in Nahant could take you a half an hour. And so we need a state representative who's gonna use their position to stand on a bully pulpit 
and say no to partners and say no to this move in union. And the reason we need to say that is because limited services, simply emergency rooms, are not good enough for the people of this district. You know, if you go to the hospital, you might go to the emergency room first, but you might be admitted to another floor from the emergency room. You might be admitted to cardiac or to one of the surgical units. That transfer needs to take place through a hallway or an elevator, not a half an hour car ride, not a half an hour ambulance ride. So we need leadership who are gonna stand up and say no to these large hospitals and to stand up for the people in this district for the services that they need. Thank you. Very good. Candidate Creighton. Thank you. Uh, as a city councilor, I've joined with fellow residents on the ground level as well as my council colleagues to strongly oppose this measure. I've been to numerous uh, public hearings. We speak regularly with folks at the Department of Public Health who ultimately make the decision whether this plan goes through. And at the State House, Senator McGee and Representative Bob Fennell have worked very hard through this budget process to make sure that essential services remain at Union and that local approval is part of the process. Just recently, uh, we were able to pass in the budget uh, a portion that would be dedicated towards local control and making sure that we get 120 days notice before any essential services are canceled. We're not going to be able to preserve union as it is today. We're going to be able to preserve essential services. This is a private hospital and I, I think we should be honest with ourselves and with our constituents that this is going to be uphill battle, but your voice does matter. And I think moving forward in this public process, all of us need to continue to be vocal that essential services remain at Union Hospital. Thank you. And candidate Kudanis. I'm not gonna take no that this can't be saved or preserved. If everyone knows me, I have organized the community grassroots movement to save Union Hospital. I have put myself out there as a fighter against partners just recently, I submitted a complaint to the attorney, to the federal attorney general, the Department of Justice, and the Federal Trade Commission on alleged violations that Partners has done throughout the years. And while our previous politicians have whistled through the graveyard as our hospital services have been diminishing from Lynn, it's unacceptable and I'm asking for monetary redress to reinstate not only the services that were lost from Union Hospital, but look at reinstating Lynn Hospital because what I found, Lynn Hospital should have never been sold. We, we deserve, we've had two hospitals since the 1800s and we deserve no less. I am taking no less for this answer and I am fighting this and, and there's nothing, if we work together as a community, we can fight this and we can demand what we want. Thank you. Thank you, candidate Kudanis. And thank you for those questions, Kiki Chaitin. Kathy, Kathy Paul will now ask questions and we will begin with candidate Crichton. In the 1970s, Massachusetts developed thousands of units of affordable housing across the Commonwealth through a state subsidy program known as 13A. For the past 15 years, the federal government, through HUD, has protected the tenants and created a path for preserving the affordability of these developments by issuing enhanced Section 8 vouchers. Last year, however, HUD reversed that decision and will no longer provide these protections for tenants or provide a pathway for owners to preserve the affordability of their apartments. Of the remaining 5,000 units across the state, 441 are here at King Lynn. As state representative, how will you work with Mass Senior Action and the residents of King Lynn to address the statement cri statewide crisis and to ensure King Lynn is preserved as its current affordability or better? Thank you, it's a, it's a very good question, a very serious issue that is now coming before us. I'd first like to say as a member of the if elected as a member of the legislature, I would fully support funding the subsidies to this vital program. I've heard loud and clear from a number of senior, senior citizens as, as well as disabled folks that would be subject to potential eviction, not being able to afford these uh, apartments at the current rates. Um, I, I certainly would work closely with Mass Senior Action, the Department of Housing and Community Development, 
as well as mass housing to make sure this issue is addressed. And I know up, the, the, up in the legislature there's a lot of talk about this right now, and we're certainly going to need everybody in this room to be very vocal, as you always are, and to get the word out. So thank you so much for such a great question. Thank you. Candidate Kudanis. Thank you. Uh, as part of my first priority in balancing transparency, we have to remove the entitlements from politicians and in re remove the entitlements from large corporations and those savings will, be will balance out this, the money, the revenue that we need for public housing. Um, there are two ways that we can address the issue directly here in Lynn. One is with the Community Preservation Act. Now that means in some communities that increases raises, uh, taxes, but since we already have a high tax levy, I uh, propose regulations that regulate the city budget to include housing as a preservation in the, in, as a priority. Uh, secondly, the waterfront development, uh, the what, we, what the public doesn't know is that we, the people, have public rights over, the, over the, most of the land by the Linway. That land was once submerged by water, and there's t it's called Tideland um, Jurisdictions. We have sovereign rights over that land to say what we want to do with it. Therefore, it shouldn't be a million dollar or half a million dollar condo community of its own. That should be an amenity for the community to use as senior, senior veteran housing and um, venues for the community and commercial uh, venues for people to work at. Thank you. Thank you. Canada Gallo. Thank you. Thank you for the question. When it comes to housing, which is so essential, it's a basic human need, you need a champion in the legislature, and I will be that champion. On the issue of Kingsland specifically, Kingsland is a place that's really close to my heart. My grandmother Lorraine, my nanny who's here today, lives in Kingsland. Also supporting me here today is attorney Jim Carrigan, who as state senator really made Kingsland happen, transformed America Park to Kingsland. So it's a place that's close to my heart, and it's a place that's facing a crisis right now. Under the Chapter 13A expiring use program, come 2020, about 170 units set aside for, for senior citizens are going to be eligible to have their rent raised to a market value. That's not acceptable, but there's something that a champion can do in the legislature for you. Number one, we need to work with other communities who are facing the same problem, and there are several, Boston, Fall River, Cambridge, Mashpee. Secondly, we need to pass legislation for the seniors who live at Kings Lynn and live in other units like it to be sure that they can't be kicked out of their home. Thirdly, we need to fund a new voucher program to take the place of 13A so that new seniors can continue to retire and live with dignity as senior citizens. You've worked so hard and you should be able to, to live with dignity, to retire di with dignity, and to live in a place like Kings Lynn or somewhere like it. I will fully support that as your next state representative. Thank you. Thank you. And question number four, candidate Kudanis. Transportation is a major concern for the 11th Essex District. Public transportation is not accessible or affordable for many, and traffic is at max capacity in most parts of the area. What is your plan for better public transportation and better traffic flow? As I said in my opening statement, transportation is one of my priorities in improving the infrastructure while also creating jobs. Um, it, it's a shame that uh, the Nahant area, the Rotary, where there's also senior housing, uh, I looked at the MBTA schedule and there's not, I mean, you have to either take the bus at six in the morning or two in the afternoon, and then there's not much transportation to the hospital. We need to increase uh, accessibility and uh, also options in transportation for seniors. I mean, when, when the Lynn police cars were uh, renewed or replaced, why didn't we have a reserve of those for senior citizens to use on a share basis uh, for those who wish to drive independently? Um, and there's, there's different options and, and we need to bring the T or the, su the subway to Lynn, whether it's via the uh, 
commuter rail line as they do in Europe. They share the rail and then have a car transport over to the, the uh, airport. It'll actually be a quicker distance to Boston than trying to go each stop through, the, um, through Wonderland. But there's also a key plan in, in, in improving our gateways. Uh, Revere Beach and Lynchshore Drive were intended to connect with one another, and there's a big gap in the middle. The Linway, and we need to improve that connection and create an interest to bring people into the city as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Transportation, like housing, is another basic human need. And, and just by a show of hands, how many people in this room don't drive, don't have a driver's license? Right? A, a lot of times, people, people my age, take for granted the ability to hop in a car, to drive to a doctor, to the store, to maybe go meet friends or family, okay? No matter your age or ability, you should have that ability to get around, to go see a doctor, to go grocery shopping, um, to get from point A to point B. You know, it may be that you never drove, it may be that there are health reasons why you can't drive, it may be the cost of having a car, you might not have family that can drive you around, and so you need a state representative who's gonna look at creative solutions. Mass Senior Action should be applauded for the work that they did on this issue. To get the fare for the tea and, and the ride dropped and rolled back as it should have been, you should be applauded for that. And you need a state representative who will be a champion on that issue and work with you. I will do that. We need to be sure, number one, that we prioritize funding the tea, prioritize funding the ride, and number two, we need to look at new ideas. New ideas like a tiered rider system. If you make more, you pay a little more. If you make less, you pay a little bit less. Creative solutions so that we can be sure that everybody can get the transportation that they need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Crichton. Thank you. Uh, well, working for State Senator Tom McGee for the past 10 years, if I didn't say this was one of my top priorities, I'd be fired tomorrow. So it, it's certainly something I've worked on up at the State House with Senator McGee, who was the chairman of transportation uh, this past year. We passed a number of really strong pieces of legislation, including a transportation finance bill. Prior to that, we had a, a good repair project backlog, billions of dollars uh, in debt, as well as Chapter 90 and RTAs being underfunded. Uh, with that finance piece, we were able to move forward and, and improve and increase Chapter 90 funding and also start to provide more reliable service and infrastructure investment throughout the state. Uh, I couldn't agree more with candidate Gallo in terms of your efforts. Again, Mass Senior Action gets it done when they go up there. There were rates increased by Mass Department of Transportation. You guys fought that and you were able to reduce that. Certainly, if I was elected as your representative, I would continue to fight every year to make sure the entire transportation system is funded. And there's always going to be those folks who say, you know, we can't afford to increase the gas tax or look towards other sources of revenue. But the reality is, we'll be with the same backlog that we had a few years ago if we don't continue to fund transportation every single year. And it's not only about getting to where you need to go safely and efficiently, it's about the economy as well. Every dollar we put into transportation, we make back significant gains in our local economy by getting, I'm told to stop now. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Kathy Paul. Barbara Mann will now ask some questions. Hello. Uh, Massachusetts has been recognized as a, lead, a national leader in health care reform. However, those advancements have left seniors behind. High out-of-pocket health care costs prevent far too many seniors from accessing the health care we need and are affording other basic needs such as food, transportation, and housing. Tonight, Mass Senior Action members are asking the audience to sign a postcard in support of our campaign to bridge the gap to affordable health care for seniors living below 300% of the federal poverty line. $35,000 is the average on that. Uh, just as Massachusetts has done for residents under the age of 65. All three of you have received Mass Senior Action's proposal to lower out-of-pocket health care costs for seniors which includes a expanding mass health eligibility to better align with the standard for those under 65, b expanding the Medicare savings program to assist those with incomes below 35,000 with their Medicare costs, 
and C, simplifying the application process to maximize enrollment. What are your thoughts on the problem and Mass Senior Action's proposed solution? Candidate Gallo. Thank you for the question. I could not agree more with Mass Senior Action's proposed solution to this problem. You know, I work every single day as an elder law attorney helping seniors who are dealing with Medicaid, dealing with costs associated with home care, with nursing home care. This is an issue I understand and I have significant private sector experience in. I'm the one at this table who will be your champion on those issues. And here's how. First, we need to start talking about a Medicare savings program. Right now in Massachusetts, if you have more than $7,000, you have to pay for all of your co-pays for Medicare, prescription drugs, out of your own pocket. We need to raise that threshold because you shouldn't have to choose between putting, putting food on the table, putting clothes in your closet, or going to the doctor, or getting a prescription filled. Secondly, Mass Health Medicaid. Right now, if you have more than $2,000, you're not eligible. You're not eligible. That threshold needs to be raised. People who have worked hard their whole life and perhaps have a, a modest amount of money put aside, we should be providing health care benefits for them. And third is a real practical solution, and it's cutting down on the paperwork. You know, some of you may know there are services and, and vendors out there who will charge thousands of dollars just to fill out a mass health application for you. That shouldn't be the case. The paperwork should be simple enough that you can all complete it on your own, regardless of whether you can afford to see a professional to do it, regardless of whether your family can hire a professional to do it. We need healthcare services available to everyone in this community and everyone in this room. It's an issue I understand. It's an issue I have significant public, private sector experience on. And it's an issue I will lead on when I'm elected your next state representative. Thank you, Candidate Gallo. Candidate Creighton. Thank you. I, I I also couldn't agree more with Mass Senior Action and the steps they've taken to, to address this issue. Right now, the current eligibility standards deny many <coughs> residents who require the assistance the most. Uh, so I, I agree with uh, Candidate Gallo, eliminating asset limits, raising the income eligibility limits, as well as raising mass health asset and income eligibility limits for those over 65. And most importantly, simplifying the application process. There's no need to go through this long, arduous <coughs> process simply to get the care and the benefits that everyone here deserves. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Kudanis. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> you know, as being a Greek as in, in background, I'm a socialist when it comes to health care. I believe health care should be easy access for all people. And that means I believe with all the hard work, this is a hardworking blue collar town that we deserve a public hospital, we deserve public care. And not only do we need to increase the eligibility require, um, elimin almost eliminate them and, and, and give all, everyone a break. Because what is happening today is the big hospitals are monopolizing and increasing the rates. We need to fight the monopolies. And then I want to do something different as a politician. I want to talk to the biotech companies and see how they can improve their medications to actually heal people instead of adding another Band-Aid and reliance to um, these pharmaceuticals. I believe there needs to be a huge oversight on that end. And actually, we could actually move on alternate methods that are less costly and um, to the average person. Simply, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question, uh, my second question is, Massachusetts has a long history of internal politics in the State House. In the past, representatives who voted against this House Speaker found their desk under the basement stairwell. Knowing this history, if voting for your constituents happens to be different than that of the State House leaders and may hinder your career advancement, how will you determine your vote and your future at the State House? Canada Creighton. Thank you. Very good question. I, I always vote my conscience. It's something that Senator McGee has really instilled in me throughout my time up there. Um, I've certainly been on the losing end of a lot of votes on the council, and uh, I, I vote what I believe in. In terms of the House as it is right now, there's some great opportunities up there for new leadership. There's been a lot of turnover, a lot of senior members that have moved on. And I think being familiar with the building, being up there for the past nine and a half years, that I'll be able to, to really start on day one to forge those relationships with my colleagues 
and to really address the issues that are important here at the ground level. And in terms of access, as a ward counselor, it's all about the, the folks at the ground level and, and your constituents that keep you informed on in these issues. And I hope that as we move forward that I can be a partner with Mass Senior Action to address a lot of these at the State House. Thank you very much. Candidate Kudanis. My goal is to be an architect and raise my family one day. I don't want to be a career politician. I'm running to fight corruption. I have no strings attached to me. I'm not a puppet. And I serve one master. I don't serve two. That one master is the people. If there's problems in-house, I'm going to attack those problems. And I'm going to bring corruption to the front because that's what I've been doing. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Gallo. Thank you for the question. I too am not a career politician. I, I have mainly worked in the private sector. I have significant public sector experience as a school committee member, but I've worked as an attorney. Before that as a paralegal, I bagged groceries. I worked at McDonald's. I worked for minimum wage. That's my background. It's not as a politician. And what I do when I take a vote on the school committee and what I'll do when I take a vote in the state house is look to see what's best for my constituents. And that's the only question before me, what's best for my constituents, not what leadership wants me to do. I have a strong record of fighting for my constituents. If you watched the school committee meeting last week, you would have seen me fighting to adequately fund the Lynn Public Schools. The schools are being underfunded by about $10 million this year. And you would have seen me fighting for new books, to put librarians back in our libraries. You would have seen me taking on that fight, taking on leadership. My friend, Brendan Crichton, who's agreed with me most, on most issues tonight, there is a difference here. And, and last week, he took a vote with leadership on the city council to double his own pay raise. That was a bad vote. And that's an example of a difference between Councillor Crichton and I. I'll vote against leadership when it comes to those votes. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara, we have, we have lots more questions. Labor, faith, and community groups and voters sent a loud message to the North Shore delegation when they overwhelmingly stated they were against lowering income taxes if that meant services would be cut or jobs lost. In 2013, the community asked the North Shore delegation to support an effort to make taxes fairer by asking the top earners to pay a fair percentage of income tax. The delegation said they would not vote for it because it would not pass at the State House. Would you take the same position, or would you have fought for the change to ensure that investment in the communities could be made and income taxes be collected in a fair way to support education, transportation, and senior services? Yes, it's the, yes that's the only way we are going to move ahead in this society. It seems that. Our, the benefits that we work hard on every day are being consolidated by the very top rich, and that is not fair. That we have a large inequality separation, and there's a huge gap this needs to end. And it, I believe, and also to that question, I also want to raise that I believe in lowering the taxes for the lower and middle class as well, as um, lifting the corporate tax cap which will bring a lot more revenue into our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate Gallo. Thank you for the question. You know, I come from a working class background. My, my grandfather didn't finish school. He worked very hard as a laborer and started his own small business, United Fuel, delivering oil, mostly in West Lynn. Um, my father's here today with me. He, he is a truck driver. My mother worked as a medical secretary. Hardworking people, and those are the people that the tax code needs to support. Those are the people that I'll support. Here's how we're going to do it. Number one, we need to raise taxes for investment income of wealthy individuals. The rich should be paying their fair share. Let me be very clear on that issue. Secondly, we have in Massachusetts a graduated income, excuse me, a flat tax rate, a flat tax, so that if you make $20,000 a year or $2 million a year, you pay the same percentage income to tax. We need a graduated rate so the wealthy, so that the top earners pay their fair share and that people like you and I, people like you and I are able to pay less. Thank you.
Thank you. And candidate Crichton. Uh, I have been on, on record numerous times on, in favor of the uh, progressive and graduated income tax, and I certainly would support that legislation should it come before again. Um, I, I certainly agree to raise the tax rate on investment income to 8.9% and also with an exemption for low to middle income seniors. I think it's so important if we want to grow the economy, it starts with the middle class. And that's really why we need to move towards a uh, progressive income tax in the state. It's going to take, a, it, it is a big fight. I, I agree with the legislators who have said that, but I think it's one worth taking on. And if elected, I'll take on that fight for you. Thank you. Thank you. And question eight will go first to candidate Gallo. Communication with constituents is very important. The 11th Essex District is filled with activists who will be contacting you for answers and your support on issues. How will you and your staff ensure constituents hear back from, their, from your office? Thank you. The question is such a good one. It's about constituent services. Now, as a school committee member, I've been responsive, returning the phone calls, returning the emails, and going to meetings to be sure that I'm in touch with my constituents. I've gone a step further. When the new Marshall Middle School was being built, or before it was built, I knocked doors in that neighborhood to proactively find out how the people felt about a new school in their neighborhood. I'm not only going to respond when you give me advice or suggestions, I'm going to look for advice and suggestions from you. As a school committee member, I, put, I called as a candidate for school committee for our meetings to be put on television. They were. When I began, began, excuse me, became a school committee member, I worked to put them online so that you can watch your school committee meetings any time of day from a computer. I attend a myriad of community events and meetings. I'm a board member with the Lynn Community Association and the Lynn Home for Young Women, working at the grassroots and ground level with the activists in this community. And I'm running because I care so much about this community because I want to continue working with this community and for this community as your next state representative. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Candidate Crichton. I think constituent service, services really should be the top priority of any elected official. At the State House, when, when we first starting out with Senator McGee's office, that was my focus and was able to, wow, that's much better if you hold the chair. I was able to work closely with, with all the different agencies to make sure that citizens of Lynn and the rest of the district were being adequately provided for and making sure that government works for you. As a Ward 5 counselor, I Got all the phone calls from everything under the sun, potholes, street lights, you name it. I've dealt with it. And it's, it's a great job. It was a great learning experience. And I, I really feel that it's fundamental to any elected official to always be accessible and responsive to those folks on the ground. We're here to work for you. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Kudanis. I am an activist. I am probably one of the biggest activists at this table, and my team is all activists. I have activists from the African American community, the Guatemalan community, the Latin American community. I have um, the se senior citizens on my campaign team. I have my ear to the ground. I know what people want, and I am currently fighting for those issues. I, I can't, I don't have to prove that. I am doing that, I, and, and not only have I put my campaign aside to fight for issues? I, I fall asleep on my computer every night, <laughs> two in the morning, working, trying to find the real answers, because I believe sometimes we get the half-truth. Um, at my community for, uh, meet and greet for my campaign, I announced the advocates that were in the room, not just the elected officials, which typically occurs in most of these events. But I recognize all the advocates, and I want to join forces with each and every one to bring all the problems in one place to come out with a great solution. Thank you. Thank you, candidate Kudanis. Question nine will be answered first by candidate Crichton. Other other than supporting the Friends of Lynn and Nahant Beach, what is your plan to make the beaches in your district as pristine as in other communities? Thank you. Uh, as a, a staffer to State Senator Tom McGee, I've had a unique opportunity to work closely with DCR and with the Metropolitan Beaches Commission, both in phase one, which started back in 2006, and more recently with Senator McGee as the chair. Uh, we, we made some great progress. That smell that was down on Lynn Shore Drive for so long, we're able to remediate that paella algae. 
through new investments in DCR as a result of the first commission's report. More recently, we've taken a closer look to see what results were attained after that first year and where we need to go back and do better things. This year in the budget, we're working very hard to make sure that DCR has adequate funding to manage the beach, as well as our water quality, which is very important. Kings Lynn Beach, as, as you know, Kings Beach, excuse me, um, as many of you know, has pollution issues. And right now we have an environmental bond bill as well as some budget efforts to address that issue. I look forward to, as a legislator, working closely with the bonds that I've made over at DCR, but also with the folks on the ground level to make sure that the beach services are working for them. Some of the other recommendations as part of the commission report were to reconstruct Nahant Causeway. I worked hand in hand with Senator McGee in the local community to make sure that that project was completed. A $20 million project that really transformed the area and, and I'm sure hopefully many of you will get to benefit Thank from that you. this summer. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have a vision for the waterfront and it's protecting our estuaries and also create not just our estuaries of the seawater, but also the Saugus River, our wetlands, our watershed, our drinking water. We have chemicals in our drinking water and those need to be removed. I don't think everyone understands the dangers in some of these chemicals. The uh, pollution in the water from uh, the old manufacturing days needs to be uh, cleaned and, and we need to be careful when we're talking about dredging because that will actually bring up those chemicals again. Another issue with not just cleaning our beaches, but increasing access. When the causeway was redone, I believe hundreds of vehicles were removed uh, as ac in the parking lot as access to the beach area. Not only that, but there is hardly um, little transportation on the busway to the, uh, the beach area. I think we need to improve the, the, uh, the MBTA schedule. We need to add more sidewalks, the pedestrian safe and uh, beautify the image, because this, this is one of the doorsteps to our city. It's not only a breather for our city, but it also welcomes visitors to our city. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and candidate Gallo. Thank you. You know, the 11th Essex District, Lynn and Nahant, we're really blessed with all the bodies of water that we have. We have the reservoir, we have the best drinking water around in Lynn. We have the Saugus River. We have the ocean, of course, in, in Lynn and in Nahant. And we need to make sure that those bodies of water stay clean. We need to have a state representative who's going to fight and make sure the funding is there to keep them free of pollution and to keep them clean. In addition to that, though, we need to keep them safe. You know, it's too often that you hear about a child drowning in, in one of our ponds or in the, in the reservoir. We need to be sure that we work to remove the weeds, to keep those bodies of water safe. <coughs> For the beach, we need to make sure that there are lifeguard programs funded because, again, families should be able to go and have a nice day at the beach. Enjoy the sun, enjoy the water, and be safe while they're doing it. So you need a state rep who's going to fight for that. In addition, on the issue of the causeway, I applaud certainly the work that's been done to make the causeway um, improved, but, but it's a, a place I think we could have really done a better job with. You know, we removed 300 parking spots, and you may have seen an article in the uh, Lynn item a couple of weeks ago, and there was traffic backed up, I think almost to Lynn. We could have done better there. We need to make sure we're talking to our constituents, talking to our community members, talking to the people in the area about what we can do, and that's what my record is. Again, when we built the new Marshall Middle School, I went to that neighborhood, talked to the people, found out how we should do it. And I would do the same with respect to any project touching our reservoir, the Saugus River, or our beaches in Lynn and Nahant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dolly. And thank you, Barbara Mann, for those excellent questions. So we have a few questions left, um, some from the audience. And um, so this is question. 10, and that will go first to Ekaterina Kudanis, candidate Kudanis. Um, do you support a casino at Suffolk Downs? And regardless of whether you support it or not, if it happens, um, what abutting community provisions will you support for the Lynn community? 
Well, first I have to say, I don't believe in casinos, but it doesn't matter what I believe, it's what the people believe, and I believe that question is on the ballot, and I um, ap applaud those efforts. Uh, what I would do to uh, implement my concerns is that uh, the planning for the casinos is tailored to benefit the board member of 12 people, where they're taking the resources from the, the poor and middle class, and it's going to the top. That model is broken. It should be divided into several mom and pop shops uh, within this complex, so the the uh, the compensation is is dispersed to different ownerships. That's one of the flaws I see in the casino planning. I, I don't like I don't like big entity entities benefiting from the community. Um, but I am glad to see it's on the ballot and then have the people's voice be heard in that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Gallo. Thank you. So, so yesterday, the Supreme Judicial Court in Massachusetts ruled that the question of whether we should have or not have casinos is going to be on the ballot. And I think the court was correct in doing that. I think that people should be able to decide whether or not we're going to have casinos. I think the legislation that was passed on casinos was correct because it said that before a casino is built, the community needs to vote one way or another, yes to have it, as Revere did, as Everett did, or no, not to have it, as East Boston did. Now this is a tough issue, it's one I've given a lot of thought to, but I'll be voting to keep the casinos on that ballot question, and here's why. I think we need to do everything we can to provide jobs. It needs to be, and I think all of us said, a priority for your next state representative. Has anyone here ever been to Mohegan Sun or to Foxwoods? And you go, and when you went there, did you go to a restaurant? Did you buy something at a store? Every time you did, somebody worked, somebody served you the food, somebody sold you something at the store. Those are jobs. The casino pays tax dollars, property tax, licensing fees. A number of, of, of different revenue sources come directly from it. If someone wins, and I hope if we have one, you all do, there's going to be sale income tax on that money, on that winning, that can be then invested back in the community. So it's not an easy issue. I'm glad that the people are going to have a chance to vote on it, and I'll be voting to keep the casinos. Thank you. Thank you. Let me remind the candidates that part of the question was, what abutting community provisions will you support for the Lynn community? Oh, thank you. Um, I, I agree also that the Supreme Court's decision to allow this to go to vote, I think it's great that the people get to weigh in. I, I am supportive of the casino. I'm supportive because of job creation and the opportunity to expand revenue. In terms of being a surrounding community, uh, I think we need to make sure that all the transportation mitigation efforts that were proposed are taken care of. I drive to the State House every day, and that roadway is a mess right now, and with a casino in there, I imagine it's only going to get worse. Uh, as part of the law, the casinos are going to need to make sure that that traffic in, in that roadway is taken care of to provide fair and equal access into Boston and not just to a casino. I also think it's so important that we continue to make sure that our auditorium is protected. We made a huge investment in the auditorium, most recently in a council approved bond, which I'm proud to have said that I led the efforts on, to make sure that we have year round shows. And I don't know if any of you have been in the downtown on a night of a show, but the streets are packed down here and it's really helping to grow our local economy. I don't want to see that hurt by a casino coming in with other shows. And that's why we're working with them to make sure that that will be taken care of as well. I think also we need to think big in terms of these casinos and, and access there. Public transportation needs to be part of the conversation. If we can somehow make the case that a Blue Line extension to Lynn, uh, with help from casino owners, it will benefit them as well, makes sense, then I say we push it. I think if we can work for water transportation efforts coming out of Lynn, I think we push for that. There's an opportunity to make this a great thing for Lynn and as your state representative, I will work hard to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next question goes first to candidate Gallo. Um, there are a variety of efforts underway to amend the US Constitution to say that corporations are not people and money is not speech. At some point, this question may come before the Massachusetts legislature. If it were to do that, how would you vote on it? I would vote to say that corporations are not people and that money is not speech. Democracy, right? We're all here today because we care about democracy. Is everyone gonna vote in this election? And that's so important. Why should your voice, your vote, be trumped by a rich investor from 
Texas or California wanting to influence an election. You should be able to make your own decision, come to forums like this, where you get to meet the candidates, where we've all taken time in our schedule to come here to talk with you, to interact with you, to listen to your concerns. And I'm afraid that if we allow corporations and the rich to spend their money in these elections, that folks like Katerina, Brendan, and I might be forced to spend our time asking them for money. I don't want that. I want to be here asking you for your vote, and that's what I do here today. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Creighton. Corporations are people. I, uh, I can't believe that this is still an issue that we're facing right now. It's something that I'll absolutely support to make sure if we're able to at a state level to declare that. Uh, I'm proud to stand up for the rights of people. This isn't about free speech. This is about the rights of people, not corporations. Thank you. Nice and quick. Candidate Kudanis. As an advocate, I'm happy to announce my name might be on the ballot twice this year as one of the first 10 signers to amend the state constitution to say money is not speech, corporations are not people. I am working with a past mass amendment and we are working on a ballot initiative which was endorsed at the Democratic Convention and read by Senator McGee and um, I'm ho hoping to organize people from the community to help me gather petitions so we can get this initiative on the ballot and have the people vote for this. Not only am I working to get this on the ballot, but as a candidate myself, I vow to keep big money out of politics. I have not accepted money from special interest groups and I will not let anyone influence my decision in voting because it's the people that matter first. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna um, take two questions and ask the candidates to give just a yes or a no or an up or a down on them. Um, candidate Crichton goes first on this one. Um, so I'm gonna ask both questions and then just a yes or no. Um, I think a deal was made this afternoon in the State House on the patient safety ballot question that would set a safe maximum limit on the number of patients assigned to a nurse while also providing flexibility to hospitals to adjust nurse, nurses' patient assignments based on the needs of patients. If that deal is not in fact made and it's on the ballot, how will you vote on it? Um, second, how will you vote on the ballot allowing certain employees throughout the state to earn and use paid sick days? So, patient safety, paid sick days. <laughs> uh, two proud yeses. All right. Candidate Kudanis. Uh, yes on the hot, oh, just, yes, yes and yes, sorry. <laughs> yes on patient safety, yes on earned sick time. Great, thank you. We're gonna have one final question and then our candidates will make their closing statements. All right, so this is, may take a long answer and candidate Kudanis, you'll be first. Um, many residents are concerned about the underfunding of the public schools. Do you have a plan for funding the public schools? And what is your position on charter schools? Uh, I'll begin with my position on charter schools first because that's a shorter answer. Um, I believe in public charter schools. Uh, we should add innovation options in the public school system. And then with that great model, the parents will not need to be re requesting private charter schools. If we give parents what they need first, they're not going to try and create their own private entities. Um, we have a large student body, and with that, we can create options. Um, and on the school budget, I believe it's such a sham because in FY in the FY10 uh, chapter 70, uh, there was a waiver given to the city. There was a one-time waiver for the FY10 budget given to the city. Now the problem is the city has been underfunding the school budget for many years, and no one has really understood why until recently that we understand that the retirement teachers fund is on the net school spending when really that should be on the city budget. 
And what that does is it takes away from maintaining our schools. We are overspending on trying to create new schools. We need to be practical in our spending. We need to add the money back in maintaining our schools and providing books so our schools aren't falling apart. And then we have to come up with $90 million to create a new school each time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Candidate Gallo. As a, as a member of the Lynn School Committee, these are issues that, that I've worked hard on, and I want to recognize also another school committee member, Maria Carrasco, who's joining us in the audience today, who's done the same. I believe, I believe in a fully funded Lynn Public Schools. I think that how well, our, how well we educate our students is going to dictate the future of our city in Lynn and our town in Nahant. We need to be sure we fully fund. And if you watch the school committee meeting last week, and if you tune in tomorrow night, you'll see me fighting for full funding. The city council passed a budget that shortfalls the schools by $11 million. It cuts by 2% police and fire. We need to be sure that we're spending what we need in the schools, the police, the fire, that we're not cutting important services like veteran services, and that our priorities are in the right place. Part of the reason that we have those cuts is because the councilors, and again, Councilor Crichton, voted to double his pay. We need to prioritize and invest in our community, in our schools, and we need to invest in our veterans and in our services. That You need a state rep that prioritizes that, I do. On the issue of charter, on the issue of charter schools, I don't begrudge any parent for making a choice on where to send their child. All parents want the best education for their children. But charter schools, unfortunately, take money from the school district as a whole and provide it just for a few students who it'll ben benefit. We can't allow that. We need to provide a quality education to all of our students. All 15,500 students in Lynn need a quality education, and so for that reason, I stand against charter schools. Thank you. Thank you, and candidate Crichton. Just uh, real quickly in terms of the, the vote on the mayor's salary, um, I knew that was gonna be a tough vote to make. I knew it was gonna have political consequences as we see here tonight, but I believed it was the right, right thing to do and that's why I voted for it. Uh, we can't take ourselves seriously as a city, an up and coming city, if we're paying our mayor, our chief executive, less than over 400 of our employees. The pay that we set it at is comparable to other communities. It's comparable to the two male mayors that previously served. And it only represents 0 .0, less than 0.03% of our budget. So I think it's a little disingenuous to act as if cuts were made because of 0 .0, less than 0.03% of our budget. If we're going to talk about our budget, let's be serious about it. And we're going to increase services by expanding our tax base which comes from economic development. And that's why I've been working hard on rezoning the downtown to encourage new restaurants, new businesses, arts and cultural entities, research and development facilities. That's why I worked hard on the waterfront to make sure that we had expedited permitting to encourage developers to come in. 100 new jobs at Kettle Cuisine, $25 million investment. This is because of the hard work of people that are making smart growth policies. That's how we expand our economy and grow opportunities and jobs. And that directly affects education. The money we have that we are creating through this revenue can be applied to education. And I agree, we can always do more to fund education. As a public school student my whole life, I recognize how important it is to have adequate resources. And on the charter issue, you know, I, I wish the best. And I you know, visit the kids at KIPP, and there are a lot of great kids, a lot of great folks over there. But, I, and, I, and again, I'm very supportive of them. But I, I cannot support taking public resources from our traditional Thank schools you, and applying Crichton. it to charter schools. Thank you. That concludes the question portion of our program tonight. The candidates will now have five minutes to make their closing remarks, and candidate Crichton will go first. First, I'd like to say thank you to you, Elizabeth. Great job tonight, and thank you to all the Mass Senior Action members here tonight, and also to my opponents. This is a great example of democracy in Lynn, and really a great night, and I appreciate it. Um, I really, uh, I'm reading my opening right now. This is a, a great quote. Uh, first, I'd, I'd really like to say the reason I got into public service was the desire to help people in my community. For the past nine years, I've been able to do just that, working for State Senator Tom McGee. 
Uh, I've learned from the best. Uh, great Chief of Staff Frank Valeri, who many of you know, um, worked on every area in government, constituent services, committee work, budgetary, legislative. I was fortunate enough to go to night school and earn my master's degree in public administration while at the State House. And more importantly, I was fortunate to meet my wife at the State House. Our district has accomplished much over this past decade, but there's so much more work to be done. And I think we just need to, to ask ourselves, what do we want to be? We need to decide what to be and go be it. With your help, we can establish a vision and find a way to achieve that. Do we want to be a district with clean and safe streets, top-notch educational facilities, and a place where you want to raise your family? I believe we do. And that's why I led the charge to improve dozens of our playgrounds and parks, including the Commons and Fraser Field. That's why I voted to fund and advocated on behalf of building a new Marshall Middle School. That is why I'm always accessible and responsive to my constituents and always willing to lend a helping hand. Do we want to be the center of the North Shore's economy with a growing and vibrant downtown based around an arts and culture district? I believe we do. And that's why I fought to make improvements to Lynn Auditorium, now running year round. Please go check out a show. That's why I fought to lead the change in zoning reform. And we're going to continue to expand zoning across the city to encourage new residents and businesses to call in their home. Do we really want to fully take advantage of our waterfront and our beaches? I know we do, and that's why I worked hard with the state delegation and the Beaches Commission to make sure that our beaches are clean. That's why we made investments in the Hot Causeway, and that's why we made investments in the Link Commuter Ferry, which just opened up this spring. And that's why in the council, I sponsored an ordinance to expedite permitting on our waterfront, and we're already seeing those results today. For the past nine years, I haven't just talked about it, I've been at the table where the decisions are made. I know how to do this job, and I love working for the people of this district. I respectfully ask for your vote on September 9th to send me up to the State House with my good friend, State Senator Tom McGee, and Representative Bob Fennell to help move this district forward. Have no doubt that I will hit the ground running. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming out tonight. Thank you. Candidate Kudanas. Thank you. When I look around at the truth, you know, this is our hometown, our friends who are suffering with daily issues of unemployment, bad health, substance abuse issues, lack of equal opportunity, and the citizens of the dis district have had enough. I'm a progressive fighter. I'm not a counterfeit progressive. I fight for the rights of the middle class and those that have no voice. We need to send a little love in the dark to get a kickstart of a good return. Government can be good. I know many of us think that we've given up on the vote, we've given up on our government, but when we all work together, we can bring good results. I am the person who knows how to bring the community together. I have organized great community efforts, grassroots ref efforts, to fight for good causes. There's nothing to fear when we work together, and this is what I want to create. When you believe in freedom, equal rights, freedom of speech, democracy, you are right for your country. I not only ask for your vote, September 9, but to vote for me because of the great causes I am fighting for you. When it's time to go, I go. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Gallo. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Charlie Gallo, and I want to thank you so much, all, everyone who's here tonight, for being here, for being informed voters. You really should give yourselves a round of applause for that, so thank you. Again, thank you, Elizabeth, for moderating, Dave, for keeping time, and for, to Mass Senior Action for hosting this forum. I'm proud to be a member of Mass Senior Action. It's really an honor that, that this is our first debate. I also want to th say thanks to the other candidates, Katarina, who I've gotten to know on the campaign trail and is becoming a friend, Brendan, who despite some of our differences is a close friend, we've hung out together socially and this friendship will remain after the campaign, so I want to thank both of the other candidates. I'm from Lynn, I love the city of Lynn, I've worked hard for the city of Lynn as a Lynn School Committee member. I've worked hard as an attorney in the area of elder law and I know that Mass Senior Action is looking for a champion someone who has real expertise and real experience in those issues. I'm the candidate who has that expertise, 
and that experience. I'm the candidate who can fight when it comes to Medicaid, when it comes to home care, when it comes to nursing home care. And to do that, I need your support. The election in this race is gonna be on September 9th. It's a primary election. I'm proud to be running as a Democrat. I'm proud to have volunteered for many Democrats with whom I share values. Senator Elizabeth Warren, Congressman John Tierney, and again, volunteering for Senator Tom McGee. Please support me. I respectfully ask for your vote. My name is Charlie Gallo, and I thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Let's give one big round of applause to all of our candidates. So I want to remind you to vote on, in the primary election on September 9th. Um, I want to, again, thank the candidates for coming. Thank everyone here tonight. Democracy works best when we have an informed and active citizenry. I want to thank Lynn Cam and remind people that they can find uh, the video of this event on Channel 22. And also thank Lynn Happens, and you can find that video on the web. Candidates are going to be available with materials, if anyone would like materials. And that concludes our program. Thank you, everyone.